Welcome to the session, Tips and Tricks to Migrate Your Spark ML Workloads to Snowpark ML. The idea of this session came from all the conversations my team and I constantly have with our customers about one, how to migrate, two, the benefits of migration, and in this session, I not only hope to cover that, I also hope to give you a few tips and tricks, I also hope to cover a few comparisons between the two frameworks, and also showcase a few customer use cases of the use case that they tried to solve, the results they saw when they migrated over. And actually, before all of that, lay a foundation of why Snowpark ML. Why should you be thinking of migrating over? I am Simran Khara. I'm a machine learning and AI architect within the field CTO team at Snowflake. Uh, I uh, started my career in finance and uh, went on to start my data science career at a company called Bear Corporation, which is the famous inventor of Aspirin. And then I, then I joined uh, Google and I worked there as a senior data scientist. I developed the core demand forecasting engine for Google Cloud, worked on causal inference, recommendation models. And from there, I joined Snowflake and have been having a fantastic time. <laughs> I've been here for about a year. This is a very interesting role because I didn't get to work with internal teams, product managers, software engineers, and uh, taking the products from zero to one, going for the go-to-market motion, and then also get to work with customers like yourself and doing the POCs, migration jobs, understanding what's working, what's not, and helping you figure out how you can create value with Snowflake solutions, Snowpark solutions in your environment. As we all know, PySpark is an open source framework for distributed and scalable data processing on large data sets. And PySpark ML is the same thing, distributed and scalable framework for doing machine learning workloads on very large data sets, medium to large data sets. So PySpark ML equivalent is Snowpark ML in Snowflake environment. And if there are three key takeaways I want you to walk away with after leaving this session is Snowpark ML is not just faster and more cost efficient than PySpark ML, it's a lot more easy to use as well. It's easy to use for all your workloads, level 100 to level 400, and it's very easy to migrate from PySpark ML to Snowpark ML. This is the slide that I'll keep coming back to because this is very important to highlight these benefits, and I'll keep trying to tie all the different takeaways from this slide, from this deck, back to this particular slide. Till very recently, more than 30% of Snowflake customers move data outside of Snowflake to do the processing and spend thousands of credits a year. This is how I did it myself as well, because there was no other way. And now after the advent of Snowpark ML, you can keep all of your data within Snowflake and send your commands to Snowflake to run your Python code, your machine learning workflows without ever moving your data. That's the biggest advantage of it. I'm a big fan of it. I'm, I'm a complete love with it. I'm here to spread the love. Uh, let's do a quick before and after. So this is a customer use case. This is a recommendation engine use case where the customer moved several petabyte size data set from their Snowflake environment into managed PySpark environment. And they did some processing with PySpark, did some processing with Pandas, and this was roughly four to five petabyte size data set moved every day, did pro done processing, and then sent back to Snowflake. Now, for all the developers in the room, you understand the problems with large data movements. One, if you have several such processes, there's a huge reliance on data engineering team. Your data engineers are working to build those pipelines to robustly move data from one engine to another, and it's a very time-taking process. This particular process used to take four to five hours to run daily, and it used to run on a 512-core machine. So as you can imagine, a 512-core machine is very expensive, and for developers in the room, you'll be able to empathize when I say that when you have such a big machine running in prod, 512-core, you have such a long process, such long time taking process, four to five hours to run daily in prod, doing testing and debugging in dev is a nightmare. And that's why it was very difficult to do debugging. When they migrated this workflow over from PySpark ML to Snowpark ML, from a runtime perspective, they saw about a 2x faster performance. and went down from 240 minutes to 135 minutes. And from a cost perspective, it went down from $75 per day to $15 per day, 80% cost reduction. And these are the kind of results we have seen our customers achieve when they migrate over. And here, that, these are the kind of results I'm here to show how you can achieve by migrating over to Snowpark ML. So let's get into it. The agenda for today is broadly, first I'll give lay a foundation of what is Snowflake ML, what is Snowpark ML, how you do machine learning in these platforms. I'll then compare the two platforms, the frameworks, 
Snowpark ML versus PySpark ML. I'll talk about how to do the migration, uh, give you some tips and tricks, some comparisons. We'll talk about a few customer use cases, what was the problem, what was the solution, some key takeaways, the results they saw. All right, let's get started. So machine learning in Snowflake. Snowflake ML is a broad set of capabilities for doing your end-to-end -end machine learning in Snowflake. It, it helps you do machine learning through two major pathways. One is out-of-the-box ML with SQL, where you can write some SQL commands, build your auto ML kind of solutions for clustering, sorry, for classification, forecasting, anomaly detection. You can also do this, if you go to SnowSight UI today, you'll see a studio button, click on it. You can go to uh, click a few buttons, build these models all by yourself. So this is the easy button of doing machine learning in Snowflake. The second pathway is doing machine learning model end-to-end -end workflow custom. And that's where Snowpark ML comes into play. So Snowpark ML is just a part, a small part, actually a very integral part of doing machine learning workflow through Snowflake ML in Snowflake. So not to confuse between the two terms, this is the focus of today's talk, Snowpark ML. Doing end-to-end -end machine learning workflow right within Snowflake that allows you to do your machine learning modeling, your data pre-processing, your feature store, your model, model registry with M for ML ops, everything all custom right within Snowflake. Now, Snowpark ML modeling API, how it is fundamentally different is when you write this piece of code, and this is important, is that when you write this piece of code, you can write it from any IDE in the world. You can write it from a Jupyter Notebook, from a Spider IDE, from uh, VS Code, your notebooks hosted in Azure, notebooks, you can write it from Hex. For that matter, you can also write it from the my favorite notebook, Snowflake Notebooks. You can write it from any notebooks in the world. This code is pushed down to run in Snowflake, right where your data is. But automatically, we automatically built it such that whenever you write this code, Snowpark ML, you have to write two lines of code, create a session. A session is an active link between your environment and Snowflake data warehouse. You write this code, this compute is sent to Snowflake, executes in a parallel distributed format, right where your data lives, that way making it such that you spend zero minutes and zero dollars on moving data, and you get the distributed compute out of the box. If you are brazen enough, you can also write your code in terminal, but I won't advise you to do that. And similar, for example, one hot encoder.fit, right? This is one of my favorite commands. Uh, running one hot encoder is a very extensive job because you're taking each value, mapping it to a column, and so on and so forth. Imagine doing it on millions of rows with millions of columns. This, but one hot encoder.fit, when you write this piece of command, I could be running it in my local Jupyter notebook. This is sent to Snowflake. It runs in a parallel and distributed format in Snowflake, automatically doing the job for me, and I don't have to worry about data movement. Similarly, model, model uh, XGBoost regressor.fit, model training. When I write this command, this command is sent to Snowflake. It trains a model on my table sitting in Snowflake without moving the my data. We also have something called container runtimes, which is absolutely new, uh, which allows you to run your model fits like PyTorch trainer in a distributed training format. So all the model training in Snowflake is single node. Some models which, are, which we've already included into distributed training allow you to do with container runtimes. Since you already have model training and all that stuff, it made absolute sense to also keep your models in Snowflake, keeping your models right where your data is, and this is where model registry comes into play. Your models should right, live right next to your data under one roof. So if you go today into your, into your Snow site, you'll see this AIML section right here, where you can go to your model section and see all the models, your team, if they have deployed, see, write them, and see them right there, and see which ones are in dev, which ones are in prod. A teaser alert, very soon you'll be able to see the entire end-to-end -end ML lineage, all the way from your data pipelines, how they are performing, their data drift, and also how your models are performing, your model drift. Is your model performing? Is your model out producing outputs which are fundamentally different from what previous outputs were? So on and so forth. So this allows your team to save the models right where your data is, under the same databases, schemas, keep them in the same project, and having very little governance issues. I hope I have given you a nice general brief about what is uh, Snowflake, what is machine learning in Snowflake looks like. Now let's get to the meat of it, which is how do you compare Snowpark ML with PySpark ML? So in this section, there are two broad topics. One is why you should think of migration from SpySpark ML to Snowpark ML, and two, what are some customer benchmarks or come customer results that you see when you do migrate over. The first point is comparing the two qualitatively. I have about eight broad 
points I want to discuss in this slide. The first one is, how does it compare from a platform perspective? When you have your models sitting in one location, let's say you're using managed PySpark, you're training your ML workflow in that location, but your data is sitting in Snowflake. You have to manage multiple platforms, and for all, if, you, if we have data base administrators or platform administrators in the group, you all know how difficult it is to manage IAMs, row RBACs, and data movement and everything. With Snowflake, it's one single platform that ensures that it's unified and it's very easy to use. So my three main pointers I said, cost, speed, and ease of use is what I'll keep coming back to over and over again. This ensures ease of use. And the second one is, I don't know if you've done this, but I've always found it very difficult to configure clusters and dependencies with PySpark clusters, whereas with Snowpark ML, you're using the same warehouses, the same compute that you're used to of using with your SQL queries. So it's the same t-shirt size warehouses, extra small, small, medium, large, and not just that. Additional benefit of using Snowpark ML warehouses because they're instantly available, they're the same kind of warehouses that, use, that you're used to of running daily. You can very easily switch the size. So imagine you have 10,000 lines of code doing different processes, different workloads. The complicated part, you can say use.warehouse large. And for simpler parts of it, you can say use.warehouse small. This ensures that you can right size your warehouse for the part of the code that requires the accurate compute clusters. This isn't one thing that you can do very easily because it definitely takes a lot of time to get the clusters warm in PySpark. Now, moving data back and forth, as we've already seen, is an expensive process, whereas when you keep it in Snowpark ML, it is right there, your models are there, your code is there, it's much faster, and in several cases a lot cheaper as well. I'll show you a customer use case that saved so much money by just do, simply keeping the data where their models are and keeping their ML workflows where data is. Now, uh, this is what I wanted to come to, is having your models and your data in the same place ensures that when you want to do inferencing with your models or train your models, data movement is zero, so you can immediately do your inferencing, basically removing all the cost and the time associated by moving from one place to another. Now, there are a few places which, where PySpark ML does have an edge. I'm happy to call those out as well to do a fair analysis. And one of them is the flexibility to configure the cluster, memory, and nodes. In the sense, it is very difficult to go beyond the 250 gigabit size warehouse that Snowflake has. You're constrained by the warehouse limitations on Snowpark optimized warehouse. Our normal warehouses have roughly eight gigs. Whereas with, with PySpark, you can very easily configure a cluster to be one terabyte, two terabyte, whatever size cluster you want, depending on your environment. There is an alternative approach now with container runtimes, which I will discuss. So this isn't available out of the box, but yes, we have gone into private preview with this, so we'll get to it shortly. When it comes to wide variety of libraries, given PySpark ML is open source, there's so many libraries that contributors have contributed which aren't available out of the box with Snowflake, so we don't really have 100% coverage of several libraries. Now, there are alternative approaches to do all, several of those models which aren't available out of the box already, which I will discuss in this session as well. For most models sitting with PySpark ML, they're distributed automatically when you fire, up, fire them up in a PySpark cluster. With Snowpark ML, not all models are distributed. There are few models that are compatible with container runtimes, which you can run in a distributed model, distributed mode, but most models run single node. So these are a few limitations which require some alternative approaches, and that's what we're here to discuss, some tips and tricks on how to do those alternative approaches. All right. Having completed qualitatively, let's go into quantitative. Now, this is a machine learning use case for a credit card default prediction model, which, in which you do a binary classification. Uh, this, uh, the GitHub repo is available for your usage anytime to test these results by yourself as well. The total data set size is about 96 million records, with 77 million records used for training and 19 million records used for testing. In this workload, if I divide it into three steps, let's say ML pre-processing, ML training, and ML model inference, with, the, with mo model pre-processing, Snowpark ML was roughly four times faster than PySpark ML. And model pre-processing includes things like one-hot encoder, standard scaler, and so on and so forth. And for model training, it was roughly 3x faster. Even though it was single node, PySpark ML is distributed multi-node parallel training, 
PySpark, Snowpark ML was 3x faster because in several use cases, you really don't need that much, that much firepower. Uh, with model inference, since both do a good job in distributing and parallelizing your inference, we saw the same time roughly 10 seconds. So you can get a good hang of uh, the speed differences when you see with Snowpark ML when you migrate over. One of our customers, ADF Energy, migrated over from PySpark to Snowpark for their mo entire model workflow, and the biggest feedback was ease of use. It used to take them several months to deploy a particular model for a customer use case. Earlier, they were able to deploy about six new data products a year. Now, they have been able to three to four times, four X that number, and be able to give the customers a better experience. We have several customers speaking today uh, and tomorrow in several of the sessions related to Snowpark ML and how they have built their ML applications on Snowflake. So please feel free to attend those. Uh, you can click the picture and decide which one you like. One of the favorite ones that I decided, recently worked on is Invista that is doing its supply chain forecasting uh, on Snowflake ML. And this Isle is a customer I recently worked with that does marketing analytics now in Snowpark ML, was earlier doing it by Spark ML. And they had an excellent experience working with Snowpark ML. They were able to speed up by nine times their workload as compared to Spark ML. And the entire process was a lot more easy to manage, eliminated complexity. As you can very easily imagine, there's no data movement. And we've ensured the library is very easy to use, much more easy to use than PySpark ML, which I'll show you very shortly. Now, these are the things I keep coming back to. It's faster and more cost efficient. Uh, it's much more easy to use, and it's very easy to migrate, as we will see in the next section. I always tell my customers that you, know, it, you can get from place A to place B in a bicycle and also in a luxury sports car. But you can go both of the places, but why not go there faster and in style? So that, that is what Snowpark ML is for you. Talking about how you can get there faster and enjoy the ride as well, let's talk about a few migration pointers. The first one is a migration mental model. We'll discuss how you should think about Py Snowpark ML when you compare it to PySpark ML for all those coming from that world, what libraries you can compare it to. And we'll also talk about a few alternative approaches and some workarounds uh, for things that aren't one-to-one. -one. Now, I've split all the uh, concepts and uh, all the discussions here into four steps. This is a typical machine learning workload. You start from data preparation, you go into ML pre-processing. ML pre-processing is basically doing your 100 coder, standard scaler, all that other stuff. You do your model training, and once you're done with that, you do model inference, and you can store your models for ML ops. Now, for all those coming from PySpark world, you must be used to of using PySpark data frames for your data preparation. It has several live functions like count, covariance, distinct, where, group by, those functional, that functionality in Snowflake, we call them Snowpark data frames. The functions are pretty much the same. The syntax is the same. Almost always the thing that changes is the imports. So we have seen several customers just change the imports and run it as is. Several of my customers, since, PySpark, uh, since Snowpark ML and Snowpark data frames is new, doesn't have a lot of uh, stack overflow discussions, they literally write PySpark uh, data frames code questions on chat GPT, get those responses, and run it in Snowpark data frames. It runs the pretty much the same way. All the ones coming from PySpark world, for ML pre-processing, you must be using a library called MLlib, which has these functionalities like binarizer, max app scaler, one hot encoder. We have the same functionalities in Snowpark ML, binarizer, max app scaler, one hot encoder, with an added advantage. When you're doing what ML lib and you're doing these machine, let's say you're doing this standard scalar, uh, something which is a very simplistic, uh, very simple kind of uh, functionality, standard scalar, you do it in a slightly different way than it is taught in schools and generally known. You have to first create a vector assembler and then pass that vector assembler in a pipeline along with standard scalar. This is how the PySpark world works. The sklearn world, or possibly other worlds, where it's much more simpler to use, you simply create a standard scalar object, and you do a fit on the training data set, whatever processing data set you want, directly of that object. And that's what Snowpark ML is. Snowpark ML is very much like sklearn frameworks, where it allows you to, for all the people that, have, that are coming out of college, that are coming out of some courses, are used to, of, so there's, not, there's not much uh, ramp up period. For model training, all the functionalities, or most of the functionalities available in MLlib 
are also available in Snowpark ML, things like Linear SVZ, Decision Tree Classifier, Random Forest, K-means, Linear Regression, all of the same functionalities in Snowpark ML, and, but our advantage, they work like sklearn. People coming from PySpark world, I've seen most of them tend to use uh, for MLOps a uh, framework called MLflow. Within Snowflake, we use something called Snowflake Model Registry. Snowflake Model Registry has very much the same functionalities, with the added advantage that you have the UI right there where your data is, and your models live right there. So things like log model, deleting a particular model version, searching model versions, prediction, log metrics, all of these are available in Snowflake Model Registry as well, and very easy to use. Now, coming to some alternative approaches, now there are a lot of libraries, a lot of functions our team have already taken, uh, taken from sklearn and seen in uh, PySpark data frames and PySpark ML and have implemented in Snowpark and Snowpark ML, but there are a few places where we don't have 100% coverage or things won't work exactly the same way. For starters, data preparation, going step by step, Data preparation, uh, we use Snowpark data frames. Snowpark does not have, Snowpark data frames does not have something called array zip. Our engineering team is constantly adding these libraries, but to add, to do this array zip functionality, and this is just an example, array zip functionality is just two lines of code. You first write a def function, and then you return a list of zip of all the arrays. These work, these workarounds are publicly available on our Git repo, and also, uh, our, you can go to our website, you can check out, uh, page called Snowpark Migration Accelerator, and in, on those pages you will see a lot of these workarounds being pointed to as well. For the step called ML pre-processing, there are a lot of uh, NLP kind of functionalities like TFIDF, which aren't available out of the box in Snowpark ML. The way to do it in Snowpark ML is you can very easily use sklearn to do a TFIDF on Pandas data frames in a stored procedure. Or if you're used to of using, if you know what Snowflake Notebooks is, you can very easily convert it to pandas, run the pandas code with sklearn objects, and do tfidf. With model training, several models on PySpark ML are distributed out of the box. You fire up the code and it automatically paralyzes all the training and inference. Those, and this is what I'm talking about, the fourth one, these aren't available out of the box distributed, right, for all models in Snowpark ML. The four models which are distributed out of the box, we have something called container runtime, which can help you do distributed training out of the box. For models which aren't available out of the box distributed, first of all, two points here. One is, Snowpark uses all the threads available in memory. So for Snowpark optimized uh, warehouse, we use all the threads in the memory to do parallel training on those threads, which ensures that your models train very fast. And most often, as I showed you earlier on in the previous, in one of the example slides above, model training on single node is most often faster than distributed model training, because when you do distributed model training, your threads have to do a lot of work in aggregating the weights, doing the distribution management, and a lot of the node management. This does not need to be done with single node model training, which ensures that single node model training is fast. But if you want to do parallel model training, there are a few models available, or sklearn does have, uh, PySpark ML does have an advantage over there. There are a few libraries, and this is what I'm talking about, the third pointer here. There are a few libraries like FP Growth, and for recommendation engine, there's a library called ALS, which aren't available out of the box in Snowpark ML. To use those libraries, you can very easily fire up those libraries with, from open source frameworks in stored procedures. And this like ML Extend has FP Growth, and implicit library has alternate least squares. Alternate least squares is one library which actually op open source or the library which is already available in Anaconda channel is roughly 20 to 30 times faster than PySpark ML's ALS library even without distributed and parallel training. Because it has been optimized so much because a lot of the libraries sitting in PySpark ML are a little older, were created a long time ago, they don't have that kind of an optimization, they don't use that many matrix optimizations, which these newer libraries do. So you can use alternatives here. For data engineering pipelines, this is, this is an example. For data engineering pipelines, if you are using Snowpark, uh, PySpark data frames, it's very easy to shift from PySpark data frames to Snowpark data frames, using something called Snowpark Migration Accelerator. Now this is what I was talking about. If you go to this website, you'll be pointed to a Git repo, which has this snow convert tool option. You can download this. This virtually migrates or converts your PySpark data frame code 
to Snowpark data frame code without even doing much work. We just press uh, convert. It gives you a first. It gives you a report on what is uh, how much coverage we have, which functions we can convert, which functions require some alternative approaches. It points you to those alternative approaches or mentions those. And if you press convert, it does the whole conversion of the code. Below here, I've actually given an example of two code bases. On the left hand side is PySpark data frame code. On the right hand side is Snowpark data frame code. Uh, it's, if I had not told you this, it would have been very difficult to differentiate between the two uh, because it's virtually the same syntax. There are a few places where it differs. And I purposely put that piece of code. This is called collect list. Collect list is available, is called, is, is used for array aggregation in PySpark data frames. And within Snowpark data frames, we call it array ag. Array ag is, does the same functionality, it's just the name is difference. There's some clear and easy benefits and uh, ML wins that you will see when you do migrate over to Snowpark ML. Or apart from Snowflake benefits, which is, of course, single, single platform, near zero maintenance, uh, moving code to data rather than data to code, compute clusters being nearly instantly available, and reduced overall computation, reduced total cost of operations because you're managing one platform and you're not moving data much. With regards to ML, your data scientists, and if you have some data scientists that are new, new from college or new joining new or starting a new project, if you have data sitting in Snowflake, you can train models out of the box on Snowflake tables without doing much work at all of data movement. Simply call that table deference and do model.fit on that table reference on Snowpark data frames. Warehouse switching is very easy, scaling up and scaling down, and it is exponentially faster to do model inference with Snowpark model registry. We have seen our customers see about 2x to 10x speed up with Snowflake model registry as compared to PySpark's ML flow model registry framework. Our model registry is right within Snowflake, so you don't have to go to another platform. And all the improvements that our engineering team, our engineering team is constantly adding new benefits, new features, making our entire engine much faster. So all the benefits that, all the improvements that our engineering do are immediately propagated across all workloads. So you will see your, your entire workload just improve by itself without doing much work. Having talked about how you can migrate or what are some differences between the two platforms, I would like to dig into a few customer use cases. What was the problem they were trying to solve? What was the result of that migration? And what were some key takeaways? So the first one is a top 10 consumer retailer in the US. They had a customer lifetime value model sitting using PySpark and MLlib. They did this POC, so the results of this, the results I'm gonna share with you are from a POC, which they did on the customer lifetime value model. And the problems why they did want to do a POC was that the process initially used to take six hours daily. They had, it was very difficult to maintain their data, their data pipelines and multiple platforms. And it used to take a long time to run this entire process. As I mentioned earlier, if you have large data sets and data science teams are usually reluctant to build those data pipelines to move data around, they have a heavy reliance on data engineering team as well. And once you have multiple platforms, you rely on IT and your governance teams to help you with IMs and RBACs and all that. So anyone who joined a new was difficult to manage with. The success criteria for this POC was, of course, 100% compatibility with Snowpark, cost and time comparison, and ease of use for developers. This is a detailed cost and performance comparison. I'll get to the left-hand side in just a while. Let's focus on the right-hand side for a minute. The runtime went from 360 minutes to 160 minutes, so about a 2x faster performance. And the cost per job went down from $337 a day to $48, what an 86% cost reduction on just one workflow by migrating over to Snowpark ML. The interesting insights over here were that when they had this data sitting in Snowflake and this workflow running on PySpark plus MLlib, this was managed PySpark cluster on Databricks, they spent about 60 minutes and $49 just moving data out. And about the same 60 minutes and $56 moving data back into Snowflake on a daily basis. They spent about 60 minutes and $56 doing the model inference. This is just about moving data in, moving data in and out and model inference. When they migrated over to Snowpark ML, the data ingress and egress went to zero. That's where they saved the time majority of the time, went down from 60, 60 minutes to zero minutes. And the cost, of, of course, went down to zero as well. And model inference went from 60 minutes to six minutes, just $1 a day. 
As you can see, the advantage of having your models and your data in the same place ensures you reduce your time and also your cost. The second use case is a recommendation engine use case. I will elaborate a little bit more. This is an online media company uh, that recommends its content on digital devices and they, they use several recommendation algorithms like ALS and other li libraries sitting in PySpark. They migrated, they used to move over six, about four to five petabyte size data set from Snowflake into the PySpark environment, doing this processing on pandas. And this used to run four hours on a four, this used to take about four hours to run on a 512 core machine. Same issues, heavy reliance on data engineering team and it being making it very difficult to debug any kind of code or your workflow. When they migrated over to Snowpark, they saw a heavy difference in time, about a 2x faster performance from PySpark ML to Snowpark ML, and about an 80% cost reduction from PySpark ML to Snowpark ML. The things to note here is are definitely on the left-hand side. They used to take about 60 minutes and $6 to migrate data out of Snowflake, and 60 minutes and $6 to migrate data back into Snowflake. This, out of the $75 total, represented about $12, right? And this was actually very much the same cost that it took to run the entire ML workload in Snowflake, which is roughly about $15. A further point to note is that out of the $75, $12 was spent here, that is moving data in and out, and the remaining $63 were a black box for the customer. They thought that they were only spending $23 on, on the managed PySpark cluster, which in this case was Databricks. They were spending $23 on Databricks that they had known. But the IT team on the back end was spending 40 more dollars to manage it on AWS. Because the AWS cost and Databricks cost are two different things. So they spent about 2x the cost to run the workload with managed PySpark on AWS, which was a very, very big uh, surprise for them. And overall cost was about $75. Now, if I dig a little deeper here, I'm going to get very technical. So, hope it excites you, just as much as it excites me. Why is it faster and why is it more cost efficient? The point number one is when you have, and this is the before and this is the after. When you have data from multiple sources and being sourced into a different platform, you are moving several petabyte size data set into a different platform that is making it slow and expensive. Processing with PySpark engine is a little slower than Snowpark engine. Uh, you must have seen your queries with Snowflake run a lot faster, and I've, we have constantly seen workloads run a lot faster with Snowpark Engine. And cluster switching is something which is not possible. If you fire up a multi-node cluster with 512 cores, with, an, uh, with a very like IX8, 4X large uh, cluster on the background, you have to stick with it for the entire workload. This is very, very expensive for workloads which are, for parts of the code which is very simple. When you run something with Snowpark ML, one, there's zero data movement, so zero cost and zero minutes spent there, so very fast and zero dollars. Your processing happens in Snowpark, which is a very fast engine. And since you can switch the clusters based on whether it's simple code, whether it's a complex piece of code, if you are spending one hour just migrating data in or out or processing on Pandas code, just use a small warehouse. You don't have you have to use a very big warehouse. And this ensures that you can manage your cost in a very efficient way. Overall, again, same pointers. It's very fast and cost efficient. I hope I've done a good job in proving that it's very easy to use and it's very easy to migrate from PySpark ML to Snowpark ML. For all of those interested in migrating, you can visit this hands-off lab, introduce machine learning with Snowpark ML, and uh, you can scan this, it takes you to that hands-off lab. It, the data is there, the code is there. It is very easy for you to understand how this Snowpark ML runs. Otherwise, you can contact a sales rep, or you can go to a documentation which talks about uh, Snowpark ML. There's several blogs as well, one from me. Uh, it only works if you like the blog. Thank you so much for visiting today. 